care advocacy. We've got the life coaching. We also have personal concierge, which is kind of cool and includes anything and everything, just like you would expect from the name and video counseling as well. If seeing a counselor face-to-face -face is inconvenient, video counseling is available as well as telephone counseling. So there's lots there and available. So since I have two minutes, I won't go into all of that uh, and all of the details, but please, uh, when you see the um, publicity materials coming over email, pay attention to those instead of hitting delete. Um, please take a look at those because we'll be sending lots out electronically and we'll be providing you at the schools also with some um, brochures and wallet cards to have on hand. But please pay attention to that electronic publicity instead of hitting delete. <laughs> I know you have a lot come through your emails, but there'll be lots of information forthcoming uh, to pay attention to and learn more about the details of all of those programs. So thank you very much and have a great school year. Thank you, Beth. We appreciate um, the work uh, that you do to support our, our staff. All of the names of the new employees are listed on the back of the printed program, if you haven't had a chance to look, as well as those who are not new to FCCPS, but who are new in positions in buildings. So let's give a warm Falls Church welcome. If you're a new employee, would you please stand up? We want to welcome you. Welcome to Falls Church. We're excited that you're here. In July, uh, Falls Church lost a good, a good friend to the schools. Uh, Mr. Lou Olam, some of you may know, um, passed away at the age of uh, 102. Right? That, that's a good long life. Lou was a civic-minded man, a faithful member of the Temple Road of Shalom, dedicated to education. In this picture in 2009, Lou Olam and Jesse Thackeray faithfully attended our convocations for as many years as they were able. I'm sure that in this photo, he's providing some advice to Ty Bird, our former George Mason High School principal. According to Lou, within days of his retirement from his distinguished career at the U.S. Information Agency, then Falls Church City Public Schools Superintendent Warren Pace asked him to serve on a committee for the education of gifted and talented students. The committee was led by then George Mason high school's assistant principal, Nancy Sprague. Several members of that group are in this photo from 2015 with Delegate Marcus Simon. Lou is in the front and behind are Marty Baer, Delegate Simon, Chet DeLong, and former Superintendent Warren Pace and Gretchen Snyder. They convinced the school board in 1980 to try the International Baccalaureate Program. And as we say, the rest is history. But as you know, history doesn't unfold easily. So many of you have been involved in the long process to take the International Baccalaureate program from several high school classes to a full diploma program and to expand our primary years program and our MYP program. And now we're the only division in Virginia to offer the IB continuum to every student pre-K through 12. Lou continued to be involved throughout the rest of his life promoting the International Baccalaureate program, and he always made a point of attending the annual ceremony honoring IB diploma candidates. The amazing thing about the evolution of this program is what started as a way to improve the gifted and talented program for a small number of students has evolved into a program that is truly for all of our students here in Falls Church. Lou never took his eye off the importance of maintaining excellence in our schools. So as we go about our work this year, I will be thinking of how I can honor Lou's legacy and invite you to consider doing the same. So with that in the back of our minds and in celebration of Lou, I would like to invite again the George Mason High School Jazz Band to perform Feeling Good, and then we'll hear from our school board chair, Aaron Gill.
It's a new dawn, it's a new day, it's a new life for me. And I'm feeling good. I'm feeling good. Fish in the sea, you know how I feel. River running free. tree you know how I feel it's a new dawn it's a new day it's a new life for me and I'm feeling good dragonflies out in the sun you know what I mean don't you know Butterflies all having fun, you know what I mean. Sleep in peace when day is done, that's what I mean. And this old world is a new world in a bold world for me. was fantastic. Thank you so much. Um, on behalf of the school board, I want to welcome you all back to school. Um, I tried to get my son to come up and say that, but he refused. Um, he was a little bit shy about that. Um, I'd like to introduce the other school board members who are here today. Um, we have Vice Chair Greg Anderson, um, Shauna Russell, Lawrence Webb, and I think Shannon Litton is here as well. Um, uh, Phil Reidinger. Uh, Phil Reidinger and Justin Castillo were not able to be here today, but they do send their best. This is such an exciting time to be in Falls Church City Public Schools. As Peter mentioned, we've made a lot of moves this summer and are in the middle of building a new high school, which is the city's largest project in our history. These new spaces are fantastic, but they're nothing without all of you. Thank you for being here today and for choosing Falls Church City Public Schools as your home. The school board looks forward to working with you and supporting you. And here is to our very best year yet. 
Uh, next, I'd like to introduce Vice Mayor Mary Beth Connolly, who's also looking forward to kicking off this new school year. Good morning, everyone. It is great to see so many of you here today and welcome you back. Um, as Vice Mayor of Falls Church, I bring you greetings for a wonderful school year from the City Council. I'm here because Mayor Dave Tarter could not be here and he sends his best wishes. And I am glad that Wyatt Shields is here from our general government. So as Aaron just mentioned, in the City of Falls Church, this is a bona fide historic moment. The redevelopment of this campus is underway and it will transform the city for the next generation. Historic moment, that's a big term. And I've really been thinking about what that means. One of the great joys of my life is that I'm a storyteller about Falls Church. So it started with the bus tours that I have done for new teachers for the last decade or so. And it's kind of become a bit of an obsession. And I collect stories about interesting people and events in Falls Church and just toss them out whenever I can. So in many ways, I found that Falls Church is the forest gump of American history. Serendipitously, we're involved in the sweep of lots of big events. So famous names like Thomas Jefferson has been here and George Washington and Dwight Eisenhower and George Mason, all those big names. But today, we're in the 99th year since women have been able to vote. And I wanna share stories of three Falls Church women, some of whom you may know about and others you may not. They lived right here in Falls Church, and they transformed our community by creating their own historic moments. Most of you probably know the story of Mary Ellen Henderson, and if you don't, you should visit the lobby of the middle school because there's a great display about her many accomplishments. She was a teacher in a substandard segregated school on Annandale Road, and at the time, Falls Church was part of Fairfax County. For decades, she asked the Fairfax County School Board for better facilities and supplies for her students. And after 20 years of being ignored, she took a different tack. She collected data and she presented a study to the school board on the inequities between her school and the whites only school. And the county finally paid attention and they built James Lee School, which still stands on Annandale Road as James Lee Community Center. So each of us, should be such fierce, persistent advocates for our students as Mary Ellen Henderson was. Another person I want to tell you about is Maddie Gundry. Probably a lot of people don't know who Maddie Gundry was. There's a street called Gundry Drive in Falls Church, and there's a historic marker on Broad Street about her. In 1899, Maddie Gundry opened the Virginia Training School that she led for 50 years. It was the only school, the only school in the whole South for children with special needs. It stood for 50 years at 300 West Broad Street, which is right across the street from where Harris Teeter is now. Not only was Maddie Gundry an educator, she was elected to the Falls Church Town Council in 1921, the year after women won the right to vote. She was a businesswoman on the board of the Falls Church Bank. She won awards as an artist and an architect. Can you believe you've never heard of her before? She, and she lived right here. So may we all be inspired by the energy, compassion, and vision of Maddie Gundry. And may we all be as courageous as Harriet Foot Turner. And probably no one's heard of Harriet Foot Turner, but wait till you hear this story. Harriet Foot Turner was a free woman of color employed on the nearby Fitzhugh Plantation. I looked that up on Google last night and it was 24,000 acre plantation. One of her responsibilities was to pick up the newly arrived, newly arrived enslaved people from the Alexandria port. In 1851, she took bold action. She was expected to deliver 12 people to the plantation, but she never came home and she left her own family behind. She posed as their owner, forged travel passes, and led the 12 to freedom in the North. After this daring and illegal act, she was never able to return home to Falls Church. However, she did well where she landed, and she was able to purchase land for her family members. And that land is in the city of Falls Church, and many of you have been there. It's where the Lincoln at Tinner Hill stands and Target are today between South Washington Street and Maple Avenue. Is that cool? Um, so this year, I encourage all of you to learn about our shared local history. Seize this historic moment.